Hi, this is Ellie Goldsmith again, speaking for the awesome organization, the Tila. We are discussing the Tila Sudaim and the vessel that will make that happen is unbelievably mentioned in an awesome class by Rav Yosef Yitzhak Jacobson, also known as YY Jacobson. He has the opportunity to share this week in Parshas Koirach, which is where the rest of the world is, and we in, part in the Holy Land in Chukas, which has definitely connected the idea of purity and purification. But the Rebbe, as we see behind us, the Babacha Rebbe and all his students, the light is shining extra this week, being that it's Kimmel Tamas today when I'm recording this. And the yacht site of the Rebbe and the legacy continues through his students, such as of Y.Y. Jacobson. So he mentioned in Parsha's Koirach the importance of having a vessel, having a mechitza, having something to hold this important light and energy of water that's going to now purify and clean your hands and you need to have something for example if you were talking about heating up water to be able to make a hot drink you need a kettle from the old days you put it on the fire if you put it straight the water straight on the fire it's gone the fire's gone the water's gone what happens is by having this vessel a kadeira as it's called in in hebrew and it's brought in chazal the idea that if you dream of a kadeira of a vessel in your dream, like these Natilas you're dying vessels, you dream about them. They're so awesome that you're thinking about them in your sleep. That the, you, this represents the concepts of peace. This is the idea of peace, says Chazal. And why Jackson brings down because peace comes when you have a vessel. Peace comes when you have a machitza, when you have space. When you make space for another person, you make space for your spouse, you make space for your student, you make space for your rabbi, you make space for your parents, for all your business colleagues. You make space around you, just like a letter in the Torah that I'm adding myself has a has white has to have makif gavul has to have this surrounding white light energy of the cloth. And if you, God forbid, you connect letters together and you don't make that space, that ba- that boundary is broken and that vessel's broken, that light that can go into that special cle, unfortunately, is no longer able to do that. So it's very important to make sure we make the right space around us, just like as the letters of the Torah and just like in the space of having these beautiful Natila Sudan vessels. And that will bring peace to the world and peace to your home and abundance. Especially when we're reading Parshas Karach, we need peace more than ever. Especially now in the Holy Land, we need peace on earth. Our main, our main. Thank you for listening and check out Natila. Peaceful, determined souls. That's all of us here. Everyone who comes weekly, I will include in this special title today of Determined Peaceful Souls. We're all here to bring more unity, more amuna to the world. And that's what the focus will be in Parshas Koirach. A special... Mashiach Dika vibe and energy. We're looking at what we can become with the right focus and the right mindset and the right instruction and guide. Thank you, Hashem. We are sitting in the studio of Rav Shalom Orish. He was just here last night. You can check out the latest class of Rav Shalom Orish. We've translated by Rav Dain Elgood in English as well as the other languages. And we have a new light. We will be continuing learning. Yes, for you guys, Brezov.com, please go there, upload. It's been a while. Many, only one class in a month and a half. I'm not sure why. I was just told they're having simchas, a lot of simchas going on there in the uh, editing department, so they're very busy with that. But anyway, we have what to say, and thank God we have our live feeds on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, as well as our Muna podcast, which, thank God, is growing with amazing content. Appreciate our collaboration from Rabbi Avraham Gislason, in Thornhill, Toronto, sending those amazing classes. I've been enjoying more and more of the series there, as well as every song we try to upload a little bit from Gedalia Fenster. And also, of course, the Rav himself, from Shalom Morish, with the English translation. Uh, what's going to be in the future? We only know Amunah. That's the answer. The answer is Amunah, and we're going to focus on the peaceful focus that's needed for now, for our generation, for what we're going through personally and generally, and in the Parsha, and during these coming months peace mindset is the right way to go mindfulness and awareness of our mission and not allowing any situation take away from our bigger goal what we're doing here so firstly we'll go into your feedback and uh, we have thank god always a lot decent amount coming through to all our channels it means a lot to me personally but also i hope you appreciate that we share it what you say I want to give a shout out to the uh, brand sponsor today, um, GEB, Gushet Sion Distilli, Still 
brewery, something like that, or brew, breweries distillery, GEB, check it out. GEB, just look that up, a Gush Etzion, um Brew Stillery, that's it, Brew Stillery. Okay, so guys, you can check it out. It's a new brand. I'm still getting used to the to the name as well, but the abbreviation GB is easy to remember. And it's a wonderful new beer company that's uh, been branded all around Gush Etzion area, which is in Israel, as well as hopefully the whole of Eretz as well as time goes on. And they gave me this wonderful hat and brand to be able to share the positive energy. We have a very similar mutual mission of bringing a lot of unity bookings, unity vibes and concert energy, Amuna flow into different venues and events that Please God will be announced in the right time if I'm meritorious to be part of it. Dedicating our 108th, 9th class for the days of Erev Tamas. Amuna class, yes, in the coming week will already be in Shabbos of Arachim Chodesh Tamas. So we'll be joining you with uh, this special time of tshuva, a special time of comfort as well. It's going to be pretty southern comfort, pretty hot days coming and the light of the sun will hopefully bring us some joy together with our loved ones and clarity in what we're doing. To Rav Shleimer, to Avra Baschana, to Rav Sholem Ben Yemna, and also dedicated to the D family. We were hoping to have Rabbi Leo D join the Zera Shimshon the Zera Shimshon class, weekly class, which we have been showcasing a, a little bit over here. And we have the opportunity, hopefully in the future, that will be rearranged. In the meanwhile, we still will be going ahead with the Zera Shimshon class tonight, Thursday night. It's a very special opportunity. That's why today for me is a little bit busy that I was waiting for the Rav's class so I could be able to bring that into what we're doing here, the latest class of the Rav. And here we are now, hopefully internalizing what Sean Morris is saying. And we're also dedicating to the D family that they should uh, only have comfort and the mission that the, the Rabbi D will hear more from him in the right time and uh, together with learning Torah. We welcome all our guests of the Holy Land online to Eretz Israel. So many inspired followers. Blessings to all of you as well as we should only hear good news. We dedicate to Gedalia's son, Yerach Madonna Ben Gedalia. We also um, are wishing for Ellie Goldsmith, myself, to have clarity in terms of what's going to be for the Munatour 2023. I'm already and available, and as with the peaceful focus that we're having, not to get caught up with machlokas like the Rav spoke about, not to be cholek, not to have any disagreement with the light of Moshe Rabbeinu. We are here, hopefully, to learn together, and we'll go into it very shortly. Now let's hear a little bit what you're saying. Nigat Simaro, thank you, Rabbi. Yala Paris Fanta, better make a donation for the free pub publicity. Yes, that was to do with the Fanta. Very good. He balances well on the Keta, Mind, Daniel Ortega, Benito, Ombre, Diashem. And lots of images, images, have you said. A sincere soul and flow, having him sing and talk in person on our podcast. That was talking about Mela Cohn, that we had the pleasure to see um, an interview by Rav Jacob Langer, uh, Jack Langer in the Living L'Chaim podcast and uh, Inspiration for the Nation specifically, and uh, it was made a comb featured there, and uh, we awakened all our wonderful playlists. We have over 80 special classes with special guests where I was able to host with the Rav and Rav Dain Elgord or Rav, Rav Cohen, and we have lots and lots of opportunity to connect. For example, on the Mela Cohen interview, he sang a few songs, which he didn't do on Inspiration for the Nation. He did sing with us, and it was a, an, a welcome addition, and I shared it uh, with Yaakov and their team. Uh, really open up our hearts. Good job sharing Yaakov with team. Uh, still open to the Unity Bookings Flow, Unity Inspires Project, so deep. Melakoy living in Lechaim. Natila mentioned you in a comment. Thank you so much. So Natila made a post about Natila Sudaim. Natila is a, a, a company with Natila Yadaim like cups, special cups, and they have whole branding and Torah from lots of well known speakers. So I did a little one and a half minute uh, blurb. Thanks so much. Wonderful collaboration. Brilliant content. Eddie Goss's Breath of English, Unity Inspires Projects. Amazing. Overcoming anxiety. Ravarish Toda. Can you please reply with the link of that video from Soulmate? That was in reference to uh, talking about the uh, Soulmate in, in the recent class. I'm going to class here. Thank you so much, Eddie Goss from Sydney. Thank you, Rabbi. You're awesome. Baruch Hashem. Of Shalom Arash's glasses, JJ Parashom, Shalom in Kavana, Amuna Kadusha, Chuva, Tefila Sadaka from Karkas, Venezuela. Remember, this is about Amuna Global. We're getting to all you guys out there, and we have to be joyous and happy. The reach, the feedback, the love we get from all of you. Someone wrote greetings already on Facebook. It's really kind of you. Keep giving feedback, giving, sharing the love. It means a lot. 
all the way from Venezuela. Amazing. Raka Kosha Rav Oseli Nachas Vitov Belev Kedusha the Sata Dishmaya Ashrenu Zakinu. Yes, the Rav is back, thank God, from France. An amazing trip. Check out some of the videos we got from the uh, French team, the Munna team, and uh, it was an amazing opportunity there for the French community. And that is an inspiration for us to make it happen for the, the American and English-speaking communities. Make it happen. Reach out on live.com. Say you want Eddie Goldsmith to be the tour manager so it will be the best it can be. And I'll give you direct um, customer service. I always try and do the client service, the connection of the wonderful followers to the Rav in the best way that we can do. Now we're going to go into an interesting experimental concept before we go into a new light. Just so hold your horses, keep the book here, and we'll go. What is this? Today which was actually yesterday, we asked ChatGPT, OpenAI, who is Rav Sholem Oresh? Yes, and we did it in English, Rav Sholem Oresh, or Rabbi Sholem Oresh. Rabbi Sholem Oresh is a prominent Israeli rabbi. This is what ChatGPT said, pretty good. And this is only a, a lesser version, like a more um, older version, not the latest, because I think you have to pay to be on that one. Um, he's a prominent Israeli rabbi, Rabbi Sholem Oresh, author and spiritual teacher. He is best known for his teachings in the realm of Jewish mysticism and Hasidic philosophy. So far, so good. Rabbi Oresh was born in Morocco in 1954, could be it somewhat right, and immigrated to Israel at a young age. He is a founder of Chutzel Chesed institutions and organizations dedicated to providing education, resources, spiritual guidance, and charitable assistance to individuals and families. Very good. The organization focuses on promoting kindness, personal growth, and strengthening one's relationship with God. And we'd add in Hashem. So there you go. You got it clear that the chat GPT managed, thank God, to give a very good explanation of who is Rav Sholem Oresh. Pretty exact. Rav Oresh has written several books that have gained widespread popularity among Jewish readers worldwide. His most well-known work is The Garden of Muna. Also published The Garden of Faith. Yeah, which is a, not such a great translation, but uh, there you go. Which explores the power of faith, we, we say Amuna, and trust in God's providence. He has traveled extensively, delivering lectures and workshops on topics such as personal development, prayer. And uh, so, so far, very good. Chat GPT, give a shout out to the new OpenAI platforms. Obviously, uh, they're getting more and more professional and clear and, and exact on their information. Let's continue on. Continue on. Strengthening one connection to spirituality. Rav Oresh is teaching emphasize the importance of embracing joy. As he always says, Ellie, smile. Gratitude. Thank you, Hashem. And love in one's spiritual journey. There's so much love from Rav Oresh when you're around. He was giving me kisses the other day. It's worth knowing the information provided is based on knowledge cut off in September 2021. And there may be have been further events and events of Rav Sholem Oresh since then. And that's all that you can go to chat.openai.com to see it all live. Your feedback is appreciated. So you can reach out to us. What do you think of that? Of the JetGPT explanation of Shomosh? I was pretty impressed. I made a post about it. And uh, this is us being innovative and experimental, seeing how we can go along with te technology. I, 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 yeah, it's scary what's coming, but we have to now configure ourselves so that we can use technology. And so far, so good with the beautiful uh, explanation of who is Rav Shomosh. Next. All right, you guys mind one more? Let's go. In fact, I might even have two more. No, just one more. Okay. Ellie Golson with the Torah classes refers to an initiative, a program led by me, Ellie Golson. So I feature also in chat GPT, which is nice. You know, I wouldn't have imagined it because we're all about Rav Oresh and the Muna. But nevertheless, I have been here for many years and we're going to hear a little bit. The first initiative program led by Ellie is a focus on teaching and promoting the concept of Muna within the Jewish community. Amuna often, and I, I'd like to be global as well. Amuna often spelled Amuna with an H is a fundamental principle in Judaism that emphasized trust and belief in God's providence and guidance. They actually spelled it as we spelled it, E-M-U-N-A. The Amuna tour led by Ali Gossetively involves trans traveling to different locations to deliver lectures, workshops, and classes of various aspects of Amuna. Halavai, we should do more. Yeah. These sessions aim to inspire and guide individuals in developing a stronger connection to their faith and a deeper understanding of the principles of Amuna. Yes, that's what it's about. I mean, well done, chat GBT on, on the ball. Yeah, the specific content and stronger uh, and format of the Torah and class may vary, but they generally cover topics such as the power of prayer, trusting in God's plan, finding meaning in challenging times, cultivating a positive and faithful mindset. And as I said, I'd come myself if that you'd be interested in that. Might not be Rav Shalom Orish, but um, in the, in, with his blessing and with the teachings and the Svarim, I'm, I'm actually going to be in England July the 6th till July the 11th. So anyone around in London, which is definitely the easiest for me, is welcome to meet up. I'm going to be in Gold's Green Hampstead for the Shabbat. 
and I'll be around Edgware most of the time, as well as joining my family for celebrations for the family Simcha. Everyone should be blessed. Um, my own family, in fact, is making a Simcha this weekend. Unfortunately, I won't be there in Spain, but we wish the bride to be Naomi Rochel. Only blessings. Mazel tov. Um, wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. Very much want to be, but I can't. The cast may drew, draw from Jewish traditional teachings, personal experiences, practical and supplying the Muna in everyday life. Wow, Jack GPT on the ball again. It's worth noting the information by based on knowledge cut off in tw- September 2021. So yeah, we've done a lot since then, but nevertheless, pretty good. Um, and there may be updates to Ellie Goldson's Muna Torn class. But then for the most accurate update mission, I recommend further on contacting the specific organization or individual associated with the program, i.e. Ellie Goldsmith, from, uh, from chat dot open eye.com your moon of feedback is appreciated dm so you can always reach out to me with your own ideas your own feedback how we can be creative how we can be innovative how we can take this monitor concept to your communities uh, as i said i have unity bookings i have lots of individuals including rev shalom morish rev yonatan galed rev dine elgod and all the wonderful li- speakers this today we just included eris safir eris safir is an amazing soul that i went to shiba with a long time ago in osamer in the no- end of the 90s and now he's uh, done tremendous things check out the bio there on our unity inspireprojects.com website and you can book Eris Safir. He's based in LA now currently, but he's doing so much for Muna and Breslov and sharing light, the infinite light, the light of the infinite. I joined his program not so long ago and it was amazing. Check it out, Eris Safir. And he's the kind of guy we can bring to your community if the rabbi is not able to make it. Lol, today we asked ChatGPT, who is Eddie Goss based in Jerusalem? Why don't we several individuals? So this is where it gets a little bit off. If you don't give it enough information, it gets a bit crazy. Uh, named Eddie Goldsmith. One notable person who comes to mind is Eddie Goldsmith, also known as DJ Nissen. Apparently, I'm a DJ, which is not correct. Eddie Goldsmith is a born British-born DJ producer who relocated to Israel and became an influential figure in the Jewish and music entertainment scene. Very nice compliment, but I'm not a DJ. Eddie Goldsmith is recognized for his work in blending Jewish themes. I mean, I have DJ for Nissen, but that's not my profession. With electronic music, yeah, EDM, yeah, there is some. There's a uh, Michael Mochten on my music site as well as. Uh, DJ Hudakris and DJ Ahava and DJ Nice. So I do have a lot of EDM music over there. Um, creating a unique fusion of traditional contemporary sounds. He's released various albums, singles, collaborating with no Jewish artists and musicians. That's true. Put out a bunch of albums myself called Together. I am a guitarist and singer. And also United Souls collaboration album one and two. I did want to do a three. But um, once everybody came out of Corona and busy baking events again, it was harder to pin people down for collaborative information. So we just sort of put it on hold for now so if anyone still wants that collaboration album number three check them out united souls by ellie goldsmith there that's the collaboration album name and with all the wonderful people there we give them a big shout out they should be blessed ellie goes recognized for his work in blending jewish theme lyrics with electric blah, blah. in addition to his music career ellie goes is active role in community projects youth outreach programs he uses music platform to inspire and engage young people promoting positive messages and values please there might be other injuries named ellie goes to jerusalem without more specific information trying to provide further detail. and my father kindly wrote the nice little thing on LinkedIn underneath when he saw this post because I posted it. And uh, yeah, much love to my father. should be blessed. My mother, everyone should be blessed with life. Everything you need. Now let's go into learning. And just as we're about to just remind you, these booklets are so important. We have at the back, Amuna. Hashem always loves me and everything will always be good. And it's only going to get better and better. We've got the magnet in the, in my holding my place there in the book. True happiness. As well as Shabbos is a source of blessing. Very important. And remember, the rab mentioned in the class this week about Uman Rosh Hashanah. So people are already getting tickets. I already spoke to someone and said a lot of the Americans, unfortunately, because of the situation in the Ukraine, are thinking about not going. Nevertheless, he bought a ticket, as well as the rab is encouraging everyone to get their Uman Rosh Hashanah tickets. What's going to be with me? I don't know. I'm going day by day right now. And I have a spare copy of this New Light book for those. We're holding at page 312. And the chapter is chapter 7. Very important, page 312, we've been discussing mastering spirituality in practical ways, and we've also talked about some very other important concepts. Um, So I'm going to put this in the bag. Someone reach out to me and uh, email me at ellie.bolsofatbrezza.co.il. You've got the email below or DM me on all the different platforms and with your address and what you're doing to share Muna Global, and I'll send you a copy. There are people out there who can testify that I've been faithful to that promise, but you need to reach out. So hearing Torah. 
Similarly, our generation, this is the bottom of 312, is a recipient of a wonderful gift, the ability to listen to audio recording, says Rosh Hashanah on every conceivable topic. That's right. And we have three podcasts, myself, Relationship Flow, check it out in the links, Unite, Unity Flow podcast, check it out, as well as United Souls Extracts on the Substack. Got a lot of podcasts uh, featuring there, a few new ones as well. There's our Shimsha and other things. And obviously our Muna podcast. Amazing opportunity. And here's the magnet. Yeah, let's not forget. how that's my bookmark. So get it on Brezov.com. You got it? Go. And, and yes, we have all these audio recordings as well. So you can check it out on our platforms on Spotify, Apple. We actually got in there before it only became Spotify. Now you can go um, to Apple Music as well and get our podcasts, all three of them there. In general, much more practical can be presented on an audio recording than in a book. And a material on an audio recording is how much better than material learned from a book because it echoes in the listener's mind. And I'm very happy that Rabbi Oish is saying that because I do believe our generation, the visual and the audio is so crucial. And it's not enough just to put out the books. We need to have all the tools of our current generation and use them all. That's why I was experimenting with ChatGPT and OpenAI because I, I give you a personal story, yeah? So there's, there's a concept of right now you want to access certain places for certain progressions in life. In order to do it, you're going to have to go to JetGPT to find out what the keywords are. That's a priceless advice. Find out whatever you're trying to do in your next business venture, whatever it is. Look up JetGPT keywords on that topic, and that will give you the ability to phrase things in a way that would be impactful. Now, with Sean Morris, he doesn't need JetGPT. He has divine connections. So he's able to draw it down in simple ways that for our generation, according to his holiness. But for us, more normal human beings, we need to use the current tools that we've got available. Um, so here we are using the tool of audio. Internalize much better. Exit lessons. Mine. Many students have told me that the moment they faced challenge, they were saved by the words they heard in my class and recording, which echoed in their ears and in the hearts. I'd add on. I say to the make yourself a teacher. Yeah. So in Pirkei Avos, we're all learning Pirkei Avos right now. The Rambam in his com commentary on the Mishnah explains, even, and this is at the top of 313, chapter 7, even if he is not worthy of being your teacher, make him your teacher until you visualize him teaching. So, like, we're determined peaceful souls. What does that mean? Yeah, let's just explain a little bit why I called the class this. Because you're going to have people who are going to be against you, seemingly. Example, I had some tension in the studio. So I've been praying for the guy in the studio. And today he actually helped me set it up. He didn't run the class. Okay, he's not up for that but he did help me set up the class so there was prayer brings peace in the house where was talking about praying for the relationships praying for your shalom bias praying for your connection to your rabbi to be saved from mock lockers from arguments this is a peaceful prayer and being determined no matter what another example yeah we're trying to build uh, lots of platforms so on some one specific platform there's someone who's not allowing us access so we have the ability to throw that person off, but that's that's not how we want to do it. That guy's worked for years. There's tremendous appreciation. He's got a good system. He's a good guy, and it's Torah is has to be developed through part, peaceful paths. What we would love is eventually through them understanding what we're trying to do, to giving us the access so we can collaborate and build this platform even bigger. And this is going to be again and again all kinds of situations you're going to have in front of you where you have to be determined to go for the peaceful path. For example, you want to say not good about someone, chas shalom. Someone told me, go speak to the Rav about this, or go speak to the Rav about that, different challenges. Not the Rav, I don't need to waste the time with chas shalom, my issues. What I need to do is connect to the Rav and what does Hashem want from me? That's that's the real point. I, I need to find out when I'm with him, like what does Hashem want, like, and get blessing and get connection. I don't have to bring arguments and, and difficulties to have already busy, busy sadik. And because a lot of the time, if we pray enough first, we won't have to even bring them. That's the point. That we can do the inner work ourselves. A lot of the time, people are always, you know, reaching out, help me with this, help me with that. And I'm, I do, I try, I forward it, I try get the help that they need. But the, the most important help they can do is do the inner work more more and more themselves. So that if, when they have the merit to be in front of the sadik, like we're on our monitor and you have the opportunity, oh, I see the rabbit in the street. Then you'll just get the blessing. You won't have to go through all the dark part because you already did the inner work. So now you're just the cleave for the blessing that's meant to be coming. And then you can empower the Sadiq's message even more because you're not in cutness. You're in godless. You're in, your mind is in an expanded sense. So listening to all these audios, it helps. For example, another current issue. 
yeah if you are dealing with marriage stuff like if you don't understand the dynamics of hormones and what goes on in a woman's body and you're married and then you're assuming that she's got issues with you because she's a bit down or upset and it's nothing to do with you and you're taking it personally which i've done many times so shouldn't forgive me and then you start getting upset back and then it just causes lack of shalom if you would have the clarity and i was just listening to a podcast explaining all the different stages of a woman's cycle and everything that goes on and now you have the information not just the uh the the spiritual but the practical emotional physical information to understand that right now is a more challenging time emotionally and physically and therefore you can be more understanding and give more space this is coming from audios this is coming from listening from growing opening yourself up to different information that you don't have different awarenesses different musagim so then you can come to clarity for that thing same with business same with uh, everything you're doing you can, there's a podcast there's some sort of advice and of course as Rav Oresh himself would say yeah if you're listening to the Muna podcast you're going to get clarity in how to do this all with Amuna, which is what Amuna is our future which is what we're doing here as a result you will learn wisdom because learning by oneself is not comparable to learning from someone else Learning by oneself is good, but learning from someone else will have a longer lasting impact and be clearer. And then he put this in bold letters, by the way. Even if the teacher is merely your equal in wisdom or even inferior to you. So you guys, you're listening to me now. I might not be such a big rabbi or anything like that, but I have the opportunity to share some advice from a Sadiq and my own personal journey and experience and the fact that I am absorbing all the time a lot, a lot of podcasts. I could go through my list if anyone would be interested. Long list of amazing inspirational podcasts where I get a lot of clarity, a lot of help, and it is slowly chipping away at the stubborn, blocked personality that I have until I become a better person with all that work in audio, in prayer, in internalization, and all the different tools we spoke about in learning Torah last week, uh, mastering Torah. Yeah, we have to, all these different things, all the different tips and tools have to come together. Someone asked me about if I just do the 30 minutes an hour, everything's going to be great. I've exploded this. No, you have to do all the work. It's a, it's a, it's a larger story. And if the Rav would only have that to teach, there would be one book about exploded this. But it's obviously into many subjects and it needs to cover many points and that's why last week's class about Torah shows you that there's different ways of connecting to these teachings and uh, so let's carry on that is to say the Rambam says a person must learn from a teacher even if the teacher is not as wise as he why because when we learn from someone else we retain that learning for a long period of time thus when we hear words of encouragement or recording even if we listen to it a few times we do not find anything new it has the ability to help us retain the learning and that is the most important thing therefore when you want to do the work of the will you seek a way to be inspired choose a recording on the topic that you want to work on listen to it repeatedly then in accordance with what it says about Above regarding books, summarize it, categorize it. Remember, there's the internalization aspect. You have to underline it or make it make your own notes. If it's a podcast, internalize it, share it with someone else you know who's going through a similar struggle. This is real a voter. This is real work for our 2023 generation. Using the podcast blessing that we have on all our phones and all our apps, we have audio with SoundCloud, we have Spotify, we have Apple, we have, uh, there's so many different ways. There's YouTube, it has some sort of podcasting flow as well now. And uh, there's so many ways. We have audio sent to our WhatsApp all the time. I, I try not to send actual files because I don't like blocking people's phones. But the concept is that we have, even on Zara Shimshon, they're doing shorts now. So we have little short versions from Charles Sokal about what, what he's learning from the Zara Shimshon. Therefore, when you want to do the work of the will, you seek a way to be inspired. Choose a recording on a topic that you want to work on. Listen to it repeatedly. In accordance with what is said above regarding books, summarize or categorize it, as we just read. For example, although my, my uh, audio is the honor of uh, the woman and first place and not subject for learning in the Garden of Peace, they encompass all the essential points in that book and they're good for your view. So we have past audios, check them out. We have, you know, not over 100 um, Muna classes and 80 of them with the Rav in, with special guests and then another 20 or so, 30 now we've included with the Rav and with Dain Elgod. And we have all my personal classes. I think there's a few hundred already by now. So we have opportunity and we also have even Rav Lazer Brody from back in the day. We have his classes, Aaron Dubinsky. We have a lot of people's classes, Gedalia Fenster. We have Gisliossen. We have special guests that came. All different audios that we've put up over the years on our Muna podcast. So much there for you to check out as well as the Brezov.com uh, catalogs is there's enough out there you just need to do the hard work of seeking it out putting it onto your machine and pressing play and allow yourself to listen and internalize and then categorize it internalize it bring it in write it down 
make it into a saying like Rav Oresh did here, put it on something significant on your laptop on as your, you know, your whatever you call it, screensaver. Make it real. Make it part of your life. Okay, it's always good to sort of mention a number of ways, hearing, reading, writing, summarizing, categorizing, singing, and more. I like the singing one. Yeah, turn it into a song. The main thing is to bring this, these to the work of the world. And all those great songs out there. There's been a lot of new music released, um, as, as we say, during this time in between Shavuot and, and the three weeks. We're going to have a lot of music out there. And we've been sharing it. Thank God we've mentioned some of the people who put out music this week. Um, let me just remind you what was new this week. I don't know why I'm having a blockage. Oh, of course, Nissan Black, Fired Up. Yeah, beautiful song. Check it out. Fight up. I also had the merit to book him last night at a school in the Vayakov. A lot of special um, Israeli children who, uh, you know, wouldn't have had the ability to ever see this in Black Live because of financial situations. So they helped. We, you know, did arrange the show very uh, discounted and were able to come to a special program with um, all kinds of Israeli children, including uh, from the Ethiopian community. And it was very uplifting. Very inspirational, and uh, it was amazing to be part of that process. And I'm always trying to do that, but the point is, it's fired up the new song. Check it out. It's a great promo for a new brand that was the, back to it. Due to the great kindness of Hashem, who has had pity on the final generation, even if people do not have the opportunity ability to set aside time to learn quietly from a book, they can listen to the audio while driving or work. Remember, we're replacing the word head disc because no one has discs anymore, pretty much. We're doing it all through podcasts and apps. As a result of listening and then reviewing what is learned, like Torah anytime, that kind of stuff. He comprehends and appreciates the importance of mastering the trait that he's working on. In short, when something is important to a person, it burns within him. He can apply the work of the will, which includes engaging in forceful prayer. I just want to give some chizak. I was on a bus and then a tram, and there was a guy learning this book. And I said, wow, that's amazing. He said, Where, where'd you get it? He said, you gave it out, a kiddish one. See, that's right. And Gush Etzion, Shirat David, I gave a class, I think I mentioned it here, and I gave out a bunch of copies for everyone to, look, to join in the learning, and I said, keep them, the Kavit Shabbos, enjoy, read them in the Shabbos, and uh, this guy was learning it on the bus, the new light, and at the beginning part, so we went into a whole discussion, and it was big chizik to see that the learning we're doing is shared out, and people in their own time, in their own space, are continuing on what we're doing here. We're just going to end off for today with one more paragraph. One of my students told me from Afshan Amar, she listened to my audio, Peace in the Home, The Honor of the Woman and First Aid, more than a hundred times. Every day he listened to an audio, this energized him, allowed him to rest, uh, no rest, and strengthened his will to work on himself. He devoted at least half an hour of us to the work of the one, a topic of obtaining Shalom Bias in the home. I remember I made a joke this week, Shalom Bias. You want a Shalom? Buy it. Buy it. Use your money to buy the Shalom Bias, meaning, and what's more precious, the money, time. That's the real acquisition of Shalom Bayit. You have to, the biggest thing you can give is your time. So we're blessed to have that time to make Shalom Bayit. Now he listens to the disc and other time, but every few weeks, and this audio, and every few weeks he listens to these audios again. Thank God he remembers the material, applies it, and prays for peace in his home. He's seen him becoming a loving husband. He sees with his own eyes how his work on attaining peace in the home has given him great energy in all other areas of serving a share, making panasa, yeah, making income, having uh, friends and connection, building other classes like we're trying to do. Thus his preserve pre perseverance and listening to these audios has led him to engage in strong work of the will and his efforts have resulted in very significant results okay that's it for today i want to wish you all a beautiful shabbos mavarach and tamas understand that koyach was saying moshe emes usarasa emes the torah is true and remember koyach is an ashama from the future we're getting ready for the days of mashiach these next three months should be turned around for difficult times into times of revelation and times of redemption we should have in mind the shabbat to turn all the darkness and have a good chodesh to have renewal and see how the part the camp of reuven the camp of of repentance, Reuven, Shimon, Gad, these three months coming up have a power to turn around everything that in exile and difficult in our life towards the good, especially with the Elul time of Tshuva, but these two more challenging months coming up, we can do the deep inner work. It's all going to come from inside, from the inner world, everything is good. Your affairs, it says a simon for this week's Pasha, Pasha's Koyach is the 95 Pesukim, and it's 95 is the idea, 95 lines of, from the Torah. 95 is the concept of Shem Adni, Aleph Dalit Nun Yud, the Shem of Hashem as our master. And, and Shem Yud Ke Vav Ke turns into Yud Ke Yud Ke. Comes Shem La Asid, the, the name of the future of Hashem's name, where the Midas, the, the Vav is going to be elevated up to a Yud. And that's how the Yikia, Yikia, Yia, the idea of Hashem's name will be. The future name, as you're saying, Amuna is our future. That's what we're learning here. We're having Amuna, 
the idea it means the same numerical value as 95 that's beautiful and that's what Kairach he was really talking in a in a, in a way that was past it, it was already way to the future and not where he was right now so you have to be present right now in the exile and work with the reality you're in be real but know that there's a light there of Koyach, of Kulam Kedoshim, that all of us are holy and all of us has connection to united souls, have connection to Amunah. All of us intrinsically are part of the purpose of this creation. And it's up to us to bring that light to the world and to share Amunah global. Amen, amen. I can't wait to see you again next week, hopefully. Please keep praying for Eliyahu Eliezer ben Hanaliba and for all the Amunah team. Should be blessed to do the Rats and Hashem Basimcha and with Shefra and Brocha and Shalom Bias and Hinuch and everything good, education and harmony in the home and we can't wait to dance with you this year in the building of the third temple our main bar main thank you future the great farewell and climax today's class is really important for me personally and for all of you wonderful listeners in our breslov english community as well as our collaborative focus of United Souls, Unity Bookings, Unity Inspires Projects, all the amazing places that we're featuring. We're live on Breads of English right now on YouTube, Facebook, and on Instagram. Thank you again for your weekly support, a growing content and opportunity to connect with the Swarim, the beautiful books of the Garden of Muna series from Avshola Morris, who is our host here in New Shalayim. We are in his wonderful studio. And we are going to learn together going ahead in the chapter seven of A New Light. You can get the book ready. This is a spare copy and I have the page ready for us. It's going to be page 315, a very important part of Open My Heart to Your Torah. <laughs> no better way to climax and say farewell. Now, is that all certain for sure? Nothing certain. You know, you never know. I'm very open minded, open hearted for Hashem changing things until it's all fixed and in writing and everything done. But until then, I do hope that this is the farewell and the climax of Golas, of our exile, because that we need to get to already. This is a priority, number one, to turn these days. We are now today a good Chodesh on Rosh Chodesh Tamas, and we should be blessed in a beautiful month. And we are in the camp of Machina Reuven. This is a special camp of Tshuva, yeah, Tamas is the f first letters, as Rav Shama Katz was mentioning last night in our Shir and Shir Dovid and Afrat between Mincha Marv. It's a Roshi Tevis. Ah, oh, Shalom. Yes, please. Everyone, please give feedback. We've got feedback already coming through on YouTube, and we're going to go through your feedback and some important ideas to do with Bard from Google and ChatGBT from OpenAI. And we're going to hear about Rav Shalom Marish, potentially also the Rebbe. Everyone who knows when I'm saying the Rebbe, Rabbi Nachman ben Fager, Rabbi Nachman ben Simcha, but also the Rebbe this week is Lubavitcher Rebbe, is Gimel Tamas. So we're going to go into that coming attraction of this wonderful class. Now to quote Rosh Shlomo Katz, Roshi Tevis Tamas is, let me get it right, Zman, Tshuva, Mash Mishmin, Uboim. Yeah, it's a time of tshuva or zmanim of tshuva at special times of tshuva where you you go over your actions and it's this is the time for it. It's coming, and we're working during this holy days of the three weeks approaching, which are really one of the highest times of of the year. Especially at the end of Golas, they get higher and higher. The more that we go down, as it says, the ravlach shavas, the shabbases get higher and higher. Says the holy svarim. The idea that we get into a bigger first Shlomo, other sleeping, the concept of the Shabbos is of this time period as we're heading now, Pasha's Chukas, and you guys out there, I think, in Pasha's Koirach, and then we're also going to keep going, hopefully, and if we get it on Brezov.com, we give a shout out to you guys, being a delay, five videos missing already, five. So if you're on Brezov.com and this manages to get there, there's five other videos that didn't make it at this point that are on YouTube, that are on Facebook, that are on Instagram Live. Thank you. That's one of the reasons why we do this wonderful live version. Hope you like the flow over here on Instagram, a little bit of fun effects, a bit of light. And I didn't mean anything by it, uh, political other than just a bit of energy and, and warmth. And uh, we have on our Imuna podcast, please go, we're going to get it out there. Also, Unity Flow podcast, we try keep updating as well as SoundCloud for Breslov English. You shouldn't forget SoundCloud, we've been constantly updating there as well. For anyone who still listens to that app, 
yeah, there was always a few people left over, Baruch Hashem, including myself. I used the app for Shama Katz's classes. And uh, yes, this is today's dedicating our 109th and 10th class. Our days of Tammuz, as we said, Tshuva, these are times to turn around these three months leading up to Rosh Hashanah. Uman Rosh Hashanah, for those who make it, keep praying for that. And uh, we lead and we lead it with a refuah shleim to Abba Baschana, dedicating that she should have a healing as well as Tila Bas Masha, and of course our host of Shalom Ben Yemna, and want you keep davening and praying. And um, we have a long list of people, unfortunately, who need uh, prayers for Rafur, and we also wish of Dain Elgod a uh, long life and the Rikas Yom Vishonim for his whole family because his father-in-law passed away, Rokh Dina Emes, this week, and he'll be in Shiva, unfortunately. So that's one of the reasons why we have a Rav Cohen who's been uh, featuring and translating for the Rav um, on our Sunday class. And uh, yes, this is emotional for me. You know, it's climax time, time to really end off in a farewell. I'm not sure if I'll be, be here much longer, maybe till Elo. Um, so make the most of it. I will be in England, as I said, in the middle, uh, July the 6th till the 11th. So that's that uh, Tuesday. I will not be doing a class. Maybe at the end of the week, I'll try to squeeze one in. But otherwise, I'm going to try to keep up my weekly posts. But nevertheless, we have to ask, what did the Lubavitcher Rebbe, what did the Chabad Rebbe want from us at the end of days? We'll get into it hopefully in a minute. We're going to go over some of these, these beautiful posts that exist uh, with technology. I, 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 what we're going to try, transform a little bit of the fear that's going on. We just had a great interview with Zuby and Elon Musk. Get a bit of clarity from someone, a genius like Elon Musk, about the coming technologies and the approaches and how we can do it with Amuna because the value system is there that makes a big difference. You have good people using the technological, the technological advancements, we're now to sell also. They have good people like that and it will give us opportunity to hopefully channel it in the right direction. That's what we're working on here in our Muna Live weekly class to use all the different tools, including Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and YouTube Live, all the social media tools. We've got a website camera going here, and I can't wait to see the footage one day. And the audio, we make sure it goes around and around and around so all of you get what you need. And that's technologically advancing towards AI, where we're going to have algorithms and different levels of VR and VR and, and AR, AI and AR, and all the different ways that these... Rashi Tavis is going to take us as the experience it gets more and more, hopefully, we'll pray more and more spiritual, more more what the Lubavitcher Rebbe envisioned for technology, which was Mashiachdik, to turn this exile around through sharing Amunah, through sharing Das, as Hashem, to know Hashem, the knowledge of Hashem, and that's one of the reasons what we're doing this for, to learn the Holy Torah together, and we're going to talk about that. So now, let's go into your feedback. Cover pick from the Siddiquim. Portraits, yes, that's on YouTube. Check out their wonderful content. You can contact them. They're our sponsor on YouTube. Plus one three zero five seven three three nine eight four four. We have six beautiful portraits of the six Lubavitcher Rebbe's all the way to the Rebbe uh, Zatzal, whose yacht site is Gimel Tamas this special Wednesday night, Thursday. Kindness Connection asks, where can I purchase the sale price books? So we just had a big sale come in that you could order all the Garden of Amuna series books without any shipping costs according to this post, as well as I'm willing to give away one copy. Whoever reach out to me by email and shares what you're doing to share Amuna Global, I will send to you, hopefully as soon as possible, send an email to ellie.golsov at brezov.coil or monolive.com where you can partner. The video and audio are not synchronized. That was the recent class. I checked it and I think it has been fixed. If not, let me know. Um, and I hope I, if I'm not here, someone else will take care of these things. Um, Javier wrote, blessings. Ellie Goldsmith. Yeah, that was my class. Thank you so much. And uh, Chodesh Tov, everyone. We're reaching out to all of you weekly and sharing and giving love. Yes, here we are. Thanks so much for sharing this video. Class from Rabbi Ralph Cohen. Mazel Tov on the Rabbinic Awards. There's a big ceremony going on this week. I hope Rabbi Dain Elgod better make it, but probably unlikely because of his shiva situation with his family. Um, but he and the yeshiva, Chachachesed, are making a big ceremony to honor all the Rabbanim, and that includes Rabbi Ralph Cohen. So Mazel Tov to him and the uh, Cohen family, Judah Cohen, big friend of ours, the pizza guy in Brooklyn. You all know who he is. Uh, Dina, um uh, MS to again to Rav Dain Elgar's father-in-law. We should only have Simchas. So now let's get to this interesting part of the shir. Everyone, 
focus, yeah? We're already at about almost nine minutes in, so let's let's move because we want to have time for the class and to talk about hookers and everything we're doing here. Recently, we asked Bard. Remember, this is the great farewell. This is the end of days. This is what we're dealing with. Bard from Google, who, who is Rabbi Sholem Orish? And we already asked ChatGPT, remember that. So now let's hear what Bard said. Bard is from Google. Rabbi Sholem Orish is an Israeli rabbi and author who is known for his work in spreading teachers of Brazil of Hasidim. That's correct. He's a founder of the Chutzel Chesed Institutes, which offer education and spiritual programs for Balit Tshuva, returnees to Judaism, and other seekers. Rabbi Orish is also the author of several best-selling books, including the Garden of Muda, the Universal Garden of Muda, and Women's Wisdom. For some reason, it chose those three. Very interesting. Rabbi Orish was born in Morocco in 1952. That added two extra years um, than Ch Chat GPT, because it said 1954. He immigrated to Israel with his family when he was 13 years old. After serving in the Israeli army, he studied the Yeshiva Devar Yishalayim. I don't know. He then went on to study at the Brezhnev Yeshiva in Ur <laughs> Ukraine, low. I'm going to make a big LOL that Rav Orish did, as far as I know, didn't learn in the yeshiva in Uman, um, other than going there for Uman Rosh Hashanah. Maybe you can call it he was learning with the Rebbe the whole year round in the, the concept of Uman. But uh, physically, I think he's only there generally for Rosh Hashanah or when he was able to make trips like Hanukkah and uh, different special times of year. But I don't think that's where he learned. I think there was... <laughs> Yes. Rabbi Orish began his winter career in 1980 when he founded the Chutzel Institutes. He has since become the most prominent figures in Breslov, a.k.a. Breslev. We like to add the E there. Movement. He is known for his down-to-earth style of teaching and his emphasis on the importance of joy, happiness. Eli smiles, he always says. And Amuna in Jewish life. It says faith, but we like Amuna. Rabbi Orish has written several best-selling books, which we already just read before, including the Garden of Moon and the Garden of Moon, blah, blah, blah. His books have been translated in many languages, have been read by millions of people around the world. That's true. I've witnessed it myself. I mean, I know millions, but definitely thousands of general people like who come to the Shurim and not just, you know, Jewish people, religious people. It's people in the world are experiencing the light of Shalom Rosh, very universal. And that personally was one of the main factors that attracted me to Rosh is the fact that we could get the concepts of Amuna universal. And I'm going to continue on that legacy as I put on the Amuna as our future Facebook. The, the legacy continues. We are sharing a Muna global, no matter where we are, where we work, what we're doing, and all the the side things are not important. The, the legacy lives on, and the great climax is that Amuna must go global, and Amuna is intrinsic to all of humanity. It's the United Souls reality that we're all connected intrinsically spiritually. And I wrote about this in my United Souls book. You can check out the link below in the description. The extracts are there, as well as all our content that we're doing here, as well as other places. And we're going to keep that growing no matter where we are. Um, Rabbi Arash is a popular speaker, he's given lectures and workshops in over 60 countries, that's interesting, I, I hope that's true. He's also the founder of Breslov World Center, I don't think so, I'm not sure, I think that was Rav, uh, Rav um, from uh, Breslov Toiwe, I think that is Rav Maimon, Rav Nosa Maimon, which is a global organization that promotes the teaching of Breslov Hasidim, and I think it's also connected to Breslov.org, uh, but it goes back to you know the original founders of uh, the Breslov uh, Institute, Breslov Research Institute, BRI, and all those wonderful things. Okay, Rob Orish is by some considered a controversial pit figure. Now, here it gets not nice. It was not 100% correct, and here it Bard loses the, th the thread. And I'm just reading this to show you how careful you have to be with technology. He has been criticized for association with, and I put in brackets, Mamish Losh and Hoira. This is a alarm bells go off. Unfortunately, they bring a very controversial thing. We did hear about it from a well known popular podcast who did quote unfortunately these lines that appeared in Bard maybe it's their them who caused this to be posted on Bard because they picked it up from the podcast um, I don't know how Bard exactly works how the algorithms and AI works but the point is that it, unfortunately there are people out there who've said some negative things and it's been picked up about the associations with the rabbi etc and uh, we're not going to mention the names of anything other than that's not our way our path, as we mentioned last week, and check it out, we are determined, peaceful souls. That's the way we're going to get to Mashiach. Very important to realize that. However, Rav Oresh, and it's a bigger mission, it gives us ability to overcome a little test down here of financial things or agendas. We can overcome all those things for a larger mission. 
And that's going to be the key for the American election. We have to have a bigger mission than just politics. There has to be a bigger mission in the whole world now for generally focused how we're going to get through this the next few years before Mashiach comes. However, I mean, we hope it will come now. That would be the best mission of all. However, Rav Arish remains a popular figure among Breslov, uh, a.k.a. Breslov Hasidim. This is from, and the link is bard.google.com, which does contain a disclaimer. Bard may display inaccurate or offensive information, which is true that it did in this case. It brought, unfortunately, not a nice concept about and uh, a well-known comment that has been said around, unfortunately, that doesn't represent Google's views, yet is more offensive than JetGPT that I added myself. Open eye with this request, Rav Sholem, when we ask about Rav Sholem Morish, which is whole essence of Sholem, be careful to, you know, what you're learning online is not necessarily the truth. You have to always go check, and it's an important lesson in itself. Before we get to Mashiach, we have to make sure the information we're internalizing, what we're going to learn in a minute, what we're going to learn from Rav Rav Shalom Arash himself from his actual books that have been checked and hopefully they'll be improved as well because some people have pointed out there's still a lot of errors there as well that need to be fixed and they will be hopefully uh, as soon as possible but we have to be careful also of any scam false versions of Bard because I, when I was trying to download it there was a pretend version I hope we have uh, virus protection on our computers but that's the kind of challenge you have to keep an eye out that even the versions of the app that are posted, unfortunately, might not be the real thing. So make sure it's from the actual Google.com website and not from some scam version. We say thank you, Hashem, and we go forward bringing Amuna Global, AmunaLive.com, and that's what it's all about. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about honoring the Gimel Tamas Yacht site coming up this week. I'm not going to read last week what I read from Jack Chibachi to compare it because I think we got through it pretty good. We're going to go straight to the Or Chodosh, a new light, get into this learning. And remember, we have a free copy here, and we have the True Happiness booklet. Get it on Brezov.com as well as the famous statement, Hashem um, always loves me and everything will always be good and it's only going to get better and better. That's from Avarish. We have the beautiful ways you can stick it on your thing. Hashem always loves me and that's a Muna. It's giving us a Muna and everything will always be good. Here it has an H, interestingly. And uh, it will only get better and better and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you keep reaching out for all those wonderful things so that you can keep the happy way of being. So even during these three months, we need to keep the Simcha going. As we mentioned, joy is a big part of a Muna. And Amuna is a big part of joy. It goes together. As I once had that conversation with Rav himself, he said there's no difference between the two. They go together. Okay, open my heart to your Torah. Page 315, chapter 7. When you learn, you must open your heart and learn with fervor, fervor enthusiasm, and yearning. Yearning is a big part of this whole safe. It's the garden of yearning and will. That's on the cover there. Yeah, this is my... Honestly, my favorite safer. I'm taking this with me. After you have come upon especially inspiring words of discussion and matters regarding which you need a special encouragement, when you find yourself stumbling, you must review such a passage over and over again. Such learning has a special power to ch result in change, changing us. That's the whole, uh, my, one of my friends made a site once called the Torah to change us. That's the real point. It should actually impact change, become more godly, more, more valued, better, holier, connected people and not just information that's not enough that's where this ai can never do this is an internal spiritual soulful journey that only the souls of humanity can understand on a deep level and that's what we're busy with here such learning is the work of the world itself and also leads to the work of the world only learning that leads to the work of the world is called learning for its own sake torah lishma for the sake of Hashem, a higher level learning, that we're doing this for a higher purpose, a higher mission, as we mentioned, because it is literally learning all to know and implement Hashem's will, Rotson Hashem. Rotson is going to match your motion. Motion was all about the Rotson Hashem. And that's why in this week's Pasha Chukas, we see the struggle with Moshe being able to come to Eretz as well, and he was prevented because of the uh, hitting of the rock. It's very difficult Pasha is very, uh, uh, not easy to understand, the Paraduma, the Red Heifer, but all very Mashiach because when Moshe does come, we're gonna have, it's going to be the Nishama of Moshe, the soul of Moshe with the body of Mashiach. It's going to come together, we're going to have a Mashiach experience, and it's going to be Gavaldic, because it's, the idea of what Moshe, being totally one with the Rots and Hashem, will spiritualize all of creation. That's the idea of having a connection to the Sadiq Emes, or the true Sadiq, and that's the kind of way that we need to grow and change ourselves, become more godly, more in tune with the Rats Hashem, something we have to dumb for. Many, many Sadiq and Tomer, Simai Zilberg, kept giving me a brach, to be to do Rats Hashem b'shlemus, to be zolchet to do the will of God completely, with joy, with simcha, happiness, with your full energy. That is the blessing I got day after day from one Sadiq, because that's the understanding of the work of the will, building Rats and Rats and it's the most powerful thing. 
We'll talk about it a bit more with Pasha's Balak next week. The Vilna Gaon learning Mesila Isharim 101 times, 101, yeah? 101 is the key number. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslau learned Reshit Chochmah endless times, it says in Sikhs Aran, 7. That raises a question. Presumably these great Torah masters and geniuses knew the books clearly and learned them by heart the first time they learned them because their minds were clear. Now, Dain Algod, he can just learn something and remember where it is exactly in Shulchan Aruch. His mind is clear. So why did they learn them so many times? The reason they wanted to integ- integrate that learning, integrate, excuse me, that learning into their hearts and arouse their will. Like chokek libecha, that's the words in Hebrew. To, to chokek, it should be on your heart, guys. Because the purpose of learning ethical literature is not to gain knowledge, but to build the world and fully acquire what one learns. So you make an acquisition. As I said, I'm taking this with me, and I don't just mean the physical book. I've got plenty of those. It's the internal aspect. Yeah, You have to look at your bookshelf. How much are you internalizing this information? You have to look at all the different audio podcasts you're listening to. How much are you internalizing the truthful parts of all those things? Yeah, When you hear what's going on out there with the world, and you hear different voices. Yeah, Unfortunately, I was listening to a podcast because I'm going to mention his name but it, up until some point i was like wow this guy's saying a lot of good things got a lot of guests and suddenly comes the shakran and the liars out there who are trying to distort reality about man woman stuff and all this confusing and racial stuff and even this guy is like suddenly starts saying he wants to be an ally and help them and you know because obviously that's the popular viewpoint i don't think if i'd really get in a room with this guy because he seems very logical and intelligent that deep down he he really believes that but with the pressure of society right now, there's a lot of pressure for us to, to buy all the garbage and to not be in tune with the truth. So we have to work even harder to filter out all the nonsense and to tune into what's good. To, that's what we internalize. That's the part of the human soul that's awake and it's going to be the netzach nesachim, the eternal part of humanity, not this like false agendas and false narratives that are all over the internet. Shem Shemayin, Shem Shem protect us women. If such giants learn a book hundred times or to master it, how much more people of scant worth, such as ourselves, review our learning again and again with thorough and enthusiasm until the material enters our rounds our will and brings about its proper effect. It's important to learn with enthusiasm, but it's even more important to learn with unwavering regularity. Therefore, even on a certain day you have no free time, your mind is unsettled, so you cannot learn in depth with with enthusiasm. Do not abandon your learning entirely. For example, Daf Yomi. You've got Rav Eli Stefanski. So I'm doing a share now, this this time around. He's the he's the rabbi for me for this third time in Shas. I don't mind saying it to give encouragement to all of you to learn Shas. Very inspirational learning Shas. But when you're by your third time, it's a whole nother level because you've heard the concepts already. Remember Shemaya Weiss was my previous rabbi I listened to online and Rav Eli Fant and all the other great Daf Yomi Rabbonim that I had here as well in Eretz HaKodesh. Now we get the opportunity through the YouTube and uh, through other ways of list- learning online, I get to hear the Shia, and I, I push myself to hear the Shia every day, and I push myself to open up the Gemara and go through it myself. So you can go through the Talmud day, page by page, just like you need to do Chamesh Rashi, as we've mentioned before, day by day. I do Shlaim Echazach Tagum every day. Yeah? And then you need to also say Psalms. Go through the whole book of Psalms, in my opinion, like the Rebbe and we'll talk about him in a moment, the awe of Chitas, of Chumash, and that's for me, the Chumash Rashi, and then the Tehillim, going through the Psalms once a month, finishing it every month, making a CM every Chodesh, and to also do the Tanya, have it in my email box every day from Chabad the Org, thank you very much, the Tanya. This is the concept of bringing together. We're going to have some beautiful posts, pictures of the Rebbe. We're going to hear what Jack GPT and Bard said about the Rebbe. We're going to go into it a little bit. And all these posts, all these quotes I've got in Jack GPT and everything, and including our questions, is going to, and obviously that part, the answer is not going to, hopefully will be coming through the classes on Sunday. But the posts are all going to, about the Rebbe, the Rebbe and Rav Shalom Moish are all going to be on Facebook so you can read it yourself. What did they say? So you don't have to even waste your time looking it up. It's important to learn with enthusiasm. And it's all important to learn and waving regularity. We just said that. Instead, show yourself that it is possible to learn at least a few lines of text, even if you read them hastily and superficially. So at the end of the day, no matter how difficult life gets and how burnt out you feel, you have to push yourself to make your Seder a Torah. That mysterious knowledge, that, that ability, that strength, that will, that rotsen, to tune into Hashem's will. That is the key that gives you the power, the strength to overcome all this narish guy, all the silliness that's going on out in the world, all the pressures that are going on economically and trying to make a living and all the things and you're trying to find, figure out where you're supposed to be and, you know, coming attractions. Maybe I won't be. I might be working for other places. And the main thing is I'm not into fundraising. My thing is to keep sharing Amuna and keep sharing the soul connection and unity bookings. We've got wonderful artists. We just had a beautiful class from Toby Rubinstein together with Gedalia Fenster. We're going to 
to share his the, the original video on our platforms because a big shout out to her and what she's doing to bring the creative energy, um, Amuna and Faith, uh, her, in her house of faith and fashion, very inspirational and Gedalia is giving a platform for that so we also will and it's very important to remember you can reach out to all these people with Unity Bookings, I'm happy to book for all these people and uh, you know today I'm speaking to Ramoshi Gersht, someone who's very important to me as a very important speaker as well as we mentioned Gedalia and Toby, always happy to represent and there's a long list on my Unity Booking site, Unity Inspire projects.com including the Rav including Milton Galen including Rav Diane Elgrad it's all there all, we want to bring inspiration and Amuna to the world and all these wonderful people together all the musicians we have as we said a lot of good new music out right now Hanan ben I'd love to want to have the merit to book him but it's a beautiful new album check it out Shama Katz is talking about how he's involved in one of the songs and uh, recently we had the Solomon Brothers in town we had a beautiful Shabbos with Yehuda Solomon from the Moshav it's good, good times a lot of great musicians a lot of great new energy coming out there from all the DJs we mentioned last week and all the wonderful other people and of course this in black being on Bardak yeah giving us a reminder about what education in the holy land needs to be about true love and true connection to the children and uh yeah he he knows firsthand how difficult that can be so he did a very funny video bring some humor to these days is very important and uh that's one of the reasons why we want to do more comedy opportunities as well keep the good vibes the humor energy anyway let's finish off the main thing is to keep up the regular flow of daily learning so as not to follow your goodwill to cool off entirely heaven forbid so by keep learning it's like the fuel to your soul it keeps the fire the energy and the passion going um let's see we've got now a whole new section called good points of learning um i think we're gonna have to go through this next time and we're gonna go into all the points of learning and then a week after a little of the light very important to realize no matter what low light and know what you're working on and illuminate our eyes. So the goal is to finish before I move on, Elo, finish off the chapter seven. Lots of important titles coming up. So we'll get there. Now, let's hear what, let's hear. Let's check it out together. Yeah. What did honoring the Rebbe for Gimel Tamas, the Babich Rebbe, the you know answer we asked chapter two, who is an open eye? Who is the Chabad Rebbe? Also known as Lubavitcher Rebbe. Let's, let's check it out. Let's read it and you can check it out online. We'll put it in our chats and then all the posts. It's important to be on the chats because that's where the most important updates go. And also our ILON. We put out a newsletter as well. And also the Zera Shimshon. Shouldn't forget. I keep sharing the Zera Shimshon. Important new opportunity of Torah. The Zera Shimshon. We keep sharing other platforms as well to keep them tuned in to Muna. It's, very, it's all connected. The whole idea of the Siddiquim. So let's go. Who was Lubavitch Rebbe? He was a prominent spiritual leader and driving force behind the Chabad Lubavitch movement. His name is Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, and he served as the seventh and last Rebbe of Chabad from 1950 until his passing in 1994. Sounds true. Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson was born on April the 18th, 1902, in Nikolov, Ukraine. I mean, this is, you're going to have to have a Rav Wawa Jacobson, one of the big Rabbonim of Chabad, or even a basic Chabadnik who knows the exact dates. I'm not sure. So, as it was, the son in law of the previous. Chabad Rabbi Rav Yosef, sorry, Rav Yosef Yitzhak Shneerson, is that so? And we have some beautiful pictures as a rab by the cover of both these two Siddiquim, Rav Menachem Mendel Shneerson and Rav Yosef Yitzhak Shneerson, is that so? Yeah, upon the passing of his father-in-law in 1950, he assumed the leadership of Chabad, we all know that, Yud Shvat, famous date, known as the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe vitalized and expanded the Chabad movement. As we all know, Chabad is global. They're doing the Amuna global thing in real time. It's amazing. And uh, my, I myself was, was brought back through their Chabad house and campus and all the different things they're doing. The Rebbe revised revi to expand the Chabad movement, transfer into global organization with thousands of emissaries, Shlichim, and our outreach centers worldwide. I even managed myself to get on their Shlichim website, and whoever is a Shlich is welcome to reach out there. He emphasized the importance of reaching out to Jews everywhere, regardless of their level of observance, and encouraged performance of mitzvahs, commandments, and study of Torah. The Rebbe was known for his profound Torah knowledge, his caring and charismatic personality and boundless love for every Jew. He placed great emphasis on education, established numerous educational institutions, including schools, yeshivas, and seminaries to promote Jewish learning and values. Under the Rebbe's leadership, Chabad Lavavich became renowned for his activities in Jewish outreach, social services, and humanitarian efforts. This is all going to be on our post in the coming days, so you can read it there as well. Um, the Rebbe encourages followers to spread goodness and kindness for bad emissaries, individuals with his teachers, guidance, and personal interaction. So far, Chapter T is spot on. His influence centered on the Chabad community was recognized as a global Jewish leader, renowned for his wisdom and vision. After his passing on June 
12, 1994. The Rebbe's teachings and legacy continue to inspire and guide millions of people worldwide. His teaching and insights are published in numerous volumes of his collective work, and his Jewish life and spiritual remain significant to this day. Beautiful. That was chat.openai.ai.com and share and a whole long link over here. May, and you can see the original uh, question I asked and the link. May his holy memory and legacy protect us and motivate us. That's great. You can even share what you read now from chat GPT. Okay. Amazing. Now, but then we asked, this is the next point, and we'll end the year with this. We asked Bard from Google. So far, JPT, almost on the spot, completely a little bit off when it talked about me, but the Rav Shalom Orish and the Baba Chereba, very impressed. Bard from Google, and by the way, JPT has a disclaimer because it was only 2021. Um, I'm sure the later version of 2023 would be even more exact. So it's pretty scary how concise and exact it's been. So we asked Bard from Google, and so far they didn't do so well with the offensive comment at the end. The Chabad Lubavitch Rebbe, Reb Nachum Mendel Schneerson, was the seventh last leader of the Chabad Hasidic movement. He was born in Nikola, Russia in 1902, and he assumed leadership of the movement in 1950, following the death of his father, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson. And the differences here on, on Bard, they then put a picture that was from uh, Wikipedia um, of the Rebbe, a beautiful picture. And so there is images on this platform. Chabad remains, uh, Chabad Rebbe, Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson, Rebbe was a prolific writer and speaker, and he is credited with revitalizing the Chabad movement and spreading its teachings throughout the world. I think it was doing pretty good, but yeah, it did need uh, an extra energy to really do how well it's doing now. He's also a strong advocate for the Jewish education outreach, and he founded many educational social services organizations. Okay, interesting way of saying it. And he died in 1994, and his followers believe that he will one day as return as Mashiach, as Messiah. So there you go. Already, once again, Bard has missed the point because that's only a small section of Chabad. Yeah, that maybe if you ask a Chabadnik personally, does he believe he was Mashiach? But he's not like a open, uh, you know, book wave flag waving Mashiach, Yechiad <laughs> Anenu uh, kind of guy. He's he's a regular Chabadnik. Maybe say inside his heart, he hoped he would be Mashiach. There's different ways to explain it. I know myself, if you want to ask me personally, he was the closest thing we've had to Mashiach, and he definitely gives us a, a big push towards getting Mashiach. And as since he said, I've done all I can, now it's up to us. So really, he gave over the, the all of Mashiach for all of us to do. So I don't really see that he has to be specifically the one to come back as Mashiach, even though he definitely has a big portion in bringing Mashiach. His legacy continues to inspire and motivate people around the world. Here are some of the Rebbe's most notable accomplishments. He founded and revitalized over 3,500 Chabad institutes. I think it's going up to 5,000 already around the world, including schools, synagogues, and community centers. He inspired the creation of the Chabad Lubavitch uh, Youth Organization, which has over 200,000 members. I'm sure it's even bigger by now worldwide. He led the movement's outreach efforts to all Jews of all backgrounds, including secular Jews like myself, intermarried Jews, Lolano, and those who had no prior connection to Judaism. He wrote over 4,000 books and articles on wide range of topics, including Torah, Talmud, Kabbalah, and Jewish philosophy. So here it's actually very nice all the extra points it says that the JGPT didn't actually cover. The teaching are based on the principles of Chabad Hasidim, which emphasize the importance of joy, love, and compassion in Jewish life. He told that every person has potential to connect with God um, and that everyone can make the difference in the world. The Rebbe's legacy is a lasting one. He inspired and motivated millions of people around the world and his teaching to be studied and applied by people of all Amuna, of all faiths. This is from bard.google.com, which does contain a disclaimer. As you mentioned before, Bard may displaying the crowd of offensive information that does not represent Google's views. So, you know, they're puttering themselves, making sure that no one's suing them or anything. Yet, it is more incorrect that Jack GPT, I'm not with this request, the Chabad Rebbe, Gimel Tamas, also be careful, as we mentioned, any false version of it. And so we say, let's do it. Let's, let's do, let's continue to live the legacy of the Rebbe, sharing a moon of global, bringing a, a Sadiq worldview global, the concepts of Mashiach, the concepts of learning and growing and being a, a mensch, Maisim Tovim, doing lots of actions that inspire your sphere of influence. We've mentioned many times here, there's a lot of opportunity to bring us to the farewell in a happy way that really the farewell leads to new opportunities. Yeah, that we're in this world for a bigger mission. And to from a kind that mission, we have to keep focused on the larger goal together. And you keep joining us. We'll be back here next week. Hopefully that this will be the farewell that will bring us to Mashiach Sakeno and the climax of this 
exile. These coming months will be turned around to days of son, Sosan and Simcha. I was asking Rav about fasting. I hope it won't have to be fast. It will be a celebration day. I'll be traveling to England on Shvai Sobitam as I hope that, in fact, everyone, Kibbutz Goliath, will be coming here and will celebrate my brother's uh, son's bar mitzvah here in the Holy Land and we'll be able to transform all our pain into joy, all our inner struggles, all the struggles we're having with technology to focus in on the truth. The truth will be what stands and that will be what will be shared and hopefully everyone in the world will live inspired and together with Mashiach Sakana Bimhavi Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please share Amuna Global and we can't wait for our next class.